I'm Darius McDermott from Chelsea Financial Services, and I'm delighted to be joined by Stephen Snowden, manager of the Artemis Corporate Bond Fund, to talk about the world of fixed income. Stephen, hi, how are you? Good, thank you, Darius. Now, we, um, in the height of this sort of COVID sell-off, uh, dialed into one of your calls, and you referred to a, well, a twice-in-a-career buying opportunity for corporate bonds. The previous one having been following the great financial crisis in 2008-9. Um, maybe talk us through the <coughs> why, why you see that similar type of opportunity again. Yeah, well, during the financial crisis, obviously markets fell massively. So, uh, and corporate bonds fell uh, aggressively as well. And I did feel the, the move was so disproportional that I felt that that would be a once in a lifetime uh, opportunity to buy corporate bonds extremely cheap. Uh, obviously, the um, markets have not faced um, a pandemic uh, before, or certainly not in the last 100 years, and uh, that caused a big reaction to the market twofold. First of all, risk sold off, so corporate bond spreads sold off, uh, equity sold off, but also at the same time, we had government bonds selling off aggressively as well. So what typically happens when equity markets fall? government bond market rally on this occasion everything fell so not only on the corporate bond side did you get hit with credit spreads widening and therefore um, the credit markets falling but also government bonds markets falling as well so you got double whammy as such so while the move from a credit spread widening point of view or the pure credit aspect wasn't as severe as the financial crisis the combined impact of government bond markets falling alongside risky assets like equities and corporate bonds fell aggressively. So the, the all-in fall in the corporate bond market was very severe and then presented a, you know, for those with, you know, a, you know, a, a firm stomach could have um, bought assets at very cheap levels. So, but it was, <clears throat> yes, you had the, the, the prices moving and becoming attractive valuations, but it was that liquidity pump by the, the central banks globally, which really gave that sort of, for me, a sort of a supercharged opportunity. Yeah, that's correct. So um, what we've seen, as every crisis unfolds, um, the central banks and policymakers are much quicker to react. And if you look at you know, what happened in the financial crisis, there was about a six-month period of time um, between the um, collapse of Lehman Brothers and, the, and TARP, um, uh, when the US started buying um, you know, assets, corporate bonds. Um, on this occasion, it only took a matter of weeks, and therefore, as the as the as the pandemic brought well, got worse, and people realised the full implications of it, uh, the central banks and the um, and also from the fiscal response from governments was much more rapid than we have seen previously. So that really helped to put a floor on valuations and then start the market recovering aggressively. During that period, you were able to rotate some of your portfolio from higher risk bonds to, to lower risk bonds, but actually not giving up that yield. Um, maybe if you could explain a, a little bit about that and give us one or two examples, please. Yeah, you know, in normal times, that would be impossible. Um, so you know, the concept of buying a asset with lower risk with the same amount of yield just doesn't really exist. What we have to bear in mind is the pandemic has created a uh, a very unusual recession. So typically what happens in a recession is new orders fall off, but contracts are still in place and revenues slowly decline. Uh, with the pandemic, the world stopped uh, in many sectors and many businesses. So it's a very unusual um, type of recession. And therefore the market had never really dealt with this before, certainly not in living memory. Um, so it was a panic. And the best analogy I can use is babies were being thrown out with the bathwater and everything sold off um, as the market started to go down aggressively. And in that dislocation for a brief window of time, the uh, unusual certainly happened. So it was possible to sell, even though we were selling bonds much lower in price than where we bought them, which is typically obviously not what anybody wants to do. Nobody wants to sell at a loss, obviously. No. But if you can sell that bond and buy a better bond that has fallen as much in price, then that makes a lot of sense, which is exactly what we did. So one of the examples is we bought, we sold you know, a bank, a subordinated bank bond, triple B rated, and we bought a UK 
uh, housing association, um, boring sector, very conservative, very defensive. Um, single A rated as a you know two notch uplift in credit rating. So it's a material improvement in credit quality uh, for no yield give up. And the other example, um, a bit easier to understand perhaps, is we sold Tesco property to buy Vodafone. Now Tesco property is an entity that owns a lot of the large supermarkets that um, Tesco own. They have a, uh, a sale and leaseback agreement with this company. Um, Tesco supermarket, food retail, obviously always does well in a recession, um, but it is very lowly rated and we were able to sell up and buy higher rated Vodafone. Now, uh, telecom companies have operated very strong through the pandemic and you know both very defensive sectors, but in that sort of crazy couple of weeks when everything was selling off aggressively was able to in you know in not universally but in many cases sell higher risk bonds and buy lower risk bonds because of the very unusual nature of, of the pandemic sell-off and in your fund you do have a bit of flexibility to invest a portion of it in other parts of the fixed income market for instance high yield or emerging market debt have you um, seen compelling opportunities in those areas and have you acted on it or are, are those opportunities you think may, may come over, over as the cycle matures or the pandemic cycle matures? Yeah, well, the fund is a, an investment grade corporate bond fund that has DNA and that's the overwhelming majority of what we do. And we do have the flexibility to buy high yield and emerging markets. Uh, we don't have any direct exposure to EM. One of the reasons why we have that facility is there are some very large companies in places like Mexico, and you define that as emerging market or developed market, it's you know it's debatable. Um, but in terms of high yield, there's been so many great opportunities presented to itself within uh, the current environment in our own core area of investment grade that we haven't had to look further afield. Uh, as time goes on, obviously things change and we do have the ability uh, to do that, but ultimately the vast majority of what we're going to be doing will be investment grade. Now, if you look at my fund since launch, uh, it has had roughly about 10% in what you could define as high yield bonds. Yeah. But just to clarify that, um, the vast majority of what we have, almost overwhelmingly what we have is split rated bonds or investment grade companies that have fallen on harder times and have slipped down the rating category into high yield and will hopefully in time migrate the way back up. So when you look at our fund, uh, we have a very conservative way of uh, defining our assets. Uh, and if you certainly were to take the highest credit rating, we would have very little on high yield. Uh, but we have that flexibility. But on the whole, the opportunity set is so broad at the minute investment grade. I don't see us deviating from that anytime soon. Stephen, thank you very much. For more information on the Artemis Corporate Bond Fund, please visit chelseafs.co.uk.